match would be a main event anywhere in the country. The Colorado Kid, former unified world champion, the man who defeated Jerry the King Lawler just a year ago, now in the ring against the world famous and absolute most dangerous man in wrestling, the Assassin. Well, I'll tell you what, Burt Prentice, you know, all these people that want to have their conjecture and their gossip around here, it's like listening to a bunch of coffee talk when they all get together and gossip about the boot of the assassin. Now, the referee, Gene Johnson, just checked out the boot. Everything's legal. Everything's on the up and up, just like we do things in New York. So I don't want to hear any complaining about an unfair advantage in this one. Colorado Kid already going for the claw on the assassin. Now he's going for the mask. I know the people at ringside would love to know who the assassin really is. The Colorado Kid, one of the perennial favorites here in MCW Wrestling. They love him when we come to Louisville every Tuesday night and the Nashville Fairgrounds every Saturday night. Well, and you're talking about the assassin there, and people want to see who he is. Let me just tell you something, Burt Prentice. He wears that mask for a reason. He don't want you to know, and he don't want these fans to know who he is. Let's go back a couple of months here. He's a hired hand, basically. Somebody has hired him to come here to MCW and take care of the Colorado kid. Any advantage he can get in that situation, he is going to use it. That's why he wears that mask, and I would, I would like to comment that, Burt, that may be the look that you could use right there, a mask. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's all going to happen tonight at the Nashville Fairgrounds Arena, the Tojo Yamamoto Memorial Car, just a few short hours away. In the main event, 20 men will enter the ring in a Rumble Royal style in one minute intervals. And I tell you, we have some of the biggest names in professional wrestling in that, Paul. And when it's all over, the last man standing will be the North American Heavyweight Champion. And Paul, I don't know if you even knew this, I announced it earlier in the program, but I threw your name in the hat. You get to draw a number tonight also. Well, while you're sitting here and these people there are going along with the Colorado Kid, he's getting these people all riled up. I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to get me out here all riled up. What you don't know, Burt Prentice, is I've had a bad back all week. My right knee's hurting in the middle of the week. My left one started started bothering me. I got a split cuticle on my left hand on the index finger. I got all kinds of problems. I really, to be quite honest, don't think I'm going to be able to handle being in that match tonight, so forget about it. There he goes. He's loaded that boot. You've seen it, ladies and gentlemen. He's loaded that boot, stamped it on the mat, and the fans know it. I'll tell you what, I think he got his boot from one of these Tennessee women down here, one of these people that makes boots for Tennessee wrestlers, because one boot, from what the assassin has told me, is a little bit larger than the other, just like the rest of these freaks down here, these mutants that have one leg shorter than the other, two arms, uh, three eyes, one in the back of their head. The assassin's boot, one's a little bit too long. Sometimes he's got to adjust it there so it fits right, and the Colorado kid and the rest of these punks around here that like to take advantage of stuff like that don't get an unfair advantage. That's what's going on. There he is. Gene Johnson checked him out and see the assassin has loaded that other boot. Well, the assassin just showed him the same foot. Well, ladies and gentlemen, tonight also on that big card, Debbie Combs, or better known as Princess D from Brentwood, Tennessee, is in a match, probably the biggest match of her life, and I'm not telling her who it is because it's against Burt's surprise. She seems a little shook up over that one, Paul Adams. There he goes and loads that boot again. Oh, my gosh, just kicked the shoulder of the Colorado kid. A Greco-Roman stomp to the shoulder right there, Burt Prentice. I don't know what you're talking about, loading up a boot. Maybe his foot was a little sore. They're just trying to adjust things and make sure somebody like the Colorado kid doesn't take advantage. Now, what you see there, I was talking earlier on about he's a professional. Unlike you who won't tell people who they have to wrestle in Nashville tonight, the assassin's a professional. He's going to work on that shoulder right there, and he's employing a strategy that somebody like the assassin only knows. No, let's tell the truth. The rumor's out all over that Stephen Dunn runs things and Debbie Combs runs things and I'm intimidated by them. And, well, no, they don't. And I'm proving it tonight. I don't have to tell them who they're wrestling. And let me tell you, there are going to be surprise looks on some faces there, not only the wrestlers, but the fans on who's going to be not only Debbie Combs' opponent, but the three tag teams I'm bringing in to take on the volunteers in that four-way dance. Well, not that I want to distract from this match right here as a Colorado kid reverses a whip into the corner and gives a big power slam down on the Assassin. Now look at him, he's choking him there trying to get that mask off for Prince. There's no need for any of that. He's not choking him, he's trying to get the mask off. Well, I think he slipped a choke in there too as well. But let me just ask you something, Debbie, while the Assassin gets out there and tries to readjust things on the mask now, now the guy's got his boot all messed up, now the mask is all messed up, he's got all kinds of problems. While he's taking a break, let me just ask you something. Who, you know, Debbie Combs has been out here. 
been out here through the entire show asking me who she's going to wrestle. Why don't you just tip me off here? Let me know who it's going to be. And uh, I won't tell her, I promise. Absolutely. I will not say nothing to Debbie. You, who is it going to be? I'm not telling you. It's Bert's surprise, and that's what it's going to be. And when this lady walks down the aisle, and it's a lady who's going to be there to wrestle Debbie Combs. There's been a lot of rumors about this, but it's going to be a lady who walks down the aisle. Debbie Combs will know she's in for a butt whipping of her life. Well, maybe Debbie ought to go down to the bus terminal then, because if it's if it's going to be a lady, as you like to call her, it's got to be somebody from out of town that you're bringing in, because there's no ladies around this part of the country. I'm going to send her down to the bus terminal, and uh, she'll know before the matches tonight who she's going to be wrestling. Yeah, I hear they know you down at the bus depot on a first name basis. Oh. Well, ladies and gentlemen, earlier on the outside, oh, what a drop kick by the Colorado kid after he had a cup of ice thrown in his face earlier. Down to the mat goes the world famous dreaded assassin. Now a clothesline sends the assassin back into the corner. Colorado kid up on the second rope now. Going for that mask on the second rope. The assassin pulls him back down to the mat. Colorado hit the back of his head real hard on the canvas. Colorado Kid tonight going for that North American title. Of course, King Mabel will be in there going for that North American title belt. Uh, Moon Dog Rex, as will 17 other wrestlers, including you, Paul Adams. Well, there's going to be 17 other wrestlers with big, big, mad, mad problems because Flash Flanagan's going to be in there once he takes care of Wolfie D. And, you know, I'm, like I said before, I'm not going to be in there. i got nothing to worry about with any of that. But the assassin, as you see right here, as I've been talking about the entire match, not only is he trying to make sure that everything's fair game in there, adjusting his own equipment, he tried to cool the Colorado kid off there on the outside with a nice glass of water. The only, way he got him, the only way he got him to the mat there was by pulling his hair. And you know, I was reading Pro Wrestling Illustrated Weekly this week, and Bill Lapter has picked Flash Flanagan to win the North American title tonight. I was very surprised by that. Of course, you have three former North American champions in the ring, King Mabel in, in the Battle Royal, Wolfie D, and the Colorado Kid. There's three former champions who on any given night could win this. But I tell you, they're... There's some uh, sleepers in there, and I think a lot of people will, will be surprised um, on this battle royal how intense it's going to be. Well, absolutely it's going to be intense, but let me tell you about this Colorado kid right here that you're hyping him up a bunch. You know, you've got these other people like Flash, and I'll give Wolfie his due. He's taken on Flash tonight, and he's still entered in that mega rumble. King Mabel as well. Why is it everybody else has to wrestle two and three times a night and then go into the Mega Rumble, and this Colorado kid doesn't have the guts to take a one-on-one -on -one competition tonight before getting in that Rumble? That's that's an unfair advantage is what that is right there. Well, do you know for a fact the Colorado kid does not have a, a match before the Royal Rumble? Well, then who's he wrestling? Well, that's none of your business. I'm not telling you guys nothing anymore. Every time I let stuff go out in, in advance, then you all set me up and Shanghai us. And uh, it's like you're always hiding in the butchers or coming down the aisle. And, and I'm tired of it. And, and if you guys don't know how to be prepared, I'm going to take you off your game, game plan. And you're just as devious as the rest of them. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. The color, You want to talk about devious. The Colorado kid there a minute ago was choking Gene Johnson against the ropes. And if he hadn't gone again and tried to get the advantage of Gene Johnson and beat him up, that big suplex right there wouldn't be happening to him. That allowed the assassin to take advantage once again. Do you plan on being out there in Flash's corner during Wolfie D's uh, street fight match? Absolutely, and I got nothing to worry about. Wolfie D wants to threaten me last week out here, say he's going to knock my lights out. I got nothing to worry about because I got Flash Flanagan, the star of MCW, in my corner. And I got nothing to worry about from these fans either because any of them get on my case, I'm just going to tell them to shut up and leave me alone. Well, Paul... You will be at ringside tonight, but I have a surprise for you during that match, too, and I'm not going to tell you. What is that? Oh, nothing. What are you talking about? Oh, just just please show up, because I have a surprise for you at ringside during that match. You're not going to interfere there. I tell you what, tonight is the night of the MCW fan. They're going to get what they pay for tonight, and you guys are not, not going to run roughshod over me, the fans, or anyone else tonight. It's the fans' dream matches tonight. Well, you want to talk about getting what they're paying for. I'm telling you what, this assassin's had this Colorado kid going for most of the match, and whoever's paying him to come after Colorado may very well get their money's worth out of this one. You see him take over there. And this Colorado kid's coming back. Now, that's a closed fist right there. And what is that to the top? That's a loaded I suppose elbow. you could, yeah, a closed elbow, sure, Paul. No, I and said a loaded elbow to the top of the head right there. The only person loaded on this show is you, and that's with too much coffee. Colorado kid now on the top rope. Oh, and he misses with that elbow, just barely gets him. Looks to me like he barely glanced him. 
I think the Colorado, that the assassin is still stunned from the last maneuver by the Colorado kid. There, he's calling for that claw, and there it is, the claw on the assassin. And he's got his thumb in one eye hold of that mask, and his pinky in the other, he's stabbing the guy right in the eyes. It's no wonder the assassin's going out. Whoa, and takes a shortcut on the Colorado kid. It's one way to get out of the claw. Yeah, I, you know, a low blow on the Colorado kid, I guess that would be a shortcut. Colorado kid there laying on the floor, the assassin taunting him. <laughs> there he is, loading that boot. Now you see it right there. You, he loaded the boot right there. Oh, I'm sorry, I was getting a sip of coffee. What? Yeah. Now there's Shane Eden down there. What's yeah, he? that is Shane Eden right there. Well, well, he sees the assassin load of the boot. Shane Eden has grabbed that foot. Colorado pulls him over. One, two, three, count of three, and the Colorado kid gets the victory over the assassin. Oh, Shane Eden, I don't know if you should have done that, though. Oh, my gosh, could you imagine having the assassin mad at you? And that match is signed for tonight, Shane Eden against the assassin. Let's go to a break. Oh, Shane, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs>